Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation, which was suggested by one of my viewers. Actually, it was indirectly suggested. So Richie is 111. Thank you for the idea. I really like this problem and I just wanted to make a video out of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. We have x squared equals 16 to the power x and we're going to be solving for x values. I'm going to go ahead and show you some ideas that will take us to the solution and also show you two different graphs. Let's get started. So we have x squared equals 16 to the power x. Now I'm going to go ahead and log both sides. If you log both sides, you're going to get, and I want to use the natural log here. You can use any base you want, but natural log is kind of easier because let's say you're going to look at the the way the function changes, uh, you're going to differentiate it, and differentiating the uh, natural log function is a lot easier than other bases. Okay? So when I move the 2 to the front, I get 2 ln x equals x ln 16. And from here, a lot of times we try to do the following. We kind of put the uh, ln x and x together. So divide by x and then divide by 2. And then we try to set these expressions equal to each other. Make sense? So when we try to do that, obviously, as is, it's not going to work. But we can go ahead and manipulate this a little bit. For example, ln 16 can be written as, I could probably just write an equal sign here. I can write this as ln 4 squared over 2. I can kind of move the 2 to the front. That's going to give me 2 ln 4 over 2. The 2 can cancels out. I leave a, That leaves a 1 at the bottom. But x can't be 1, obviously. That's not going to work. Or I can just write this ln 16 as ln 2 to the 4th power divided by 2. And I can kind of move the 4 to the front. That's going to give me 4 ln 2 divided by 2. But that's supposed to be ln x, right? So I'm supposed to get a one-to-one -one correspondence, but I don't like the 4 there, right? So how would you get rid of the 4? Answer is easy. Multiply by one-fourth. So let's go ahead and do it at the top and at the bottom. The 4 cancels out, leaving us with ln 2 over one-half. Hmm. This is... Does this look fine? Uh, not really. So the problem here is... I have a two, one half at the bottom, so if x is one half, then ln x is not going to be ln two. So if x x equals two and one half at the same time, but one thing to keep in mind, one half and two are reciprocals. So I can do a little bit of manipulation with negatives to hopefully uh, to get what I want or, or to get closer. So here's what I can do: I can write the two as ln one half to the power negative one, and then move the negative one to the front. Now let's see what happens. This is interesting. Move to negative 1, so you're going to get negative ln 1 half divided by 1 half. Oh man, if you didn't have the negative, wouldn't this be awesome? <laughs> it would be perfect, right? But we don't live in a perfect world. But we can make it nicer. So here's the thing. I can actually do a little bit of focus pocus and move the negative to the denominator. But I will still have a negative, right? But guess what? Something called absolute value Ma magically or maybe mathematically makes the negative disappear but you can't just take the absolute value obviously so we need to do something about it and what is that that is the absolute value and why is it justified let me tell you when you move this two to the front you're actually uh, risking x uh, kind of like risking the making the negative I just couldn't say it. Okay, you, you could basically ma make the x negative, which is not good because this is only defined for positive x values. But the square kind of takes care of that. So, in other words, this is safer to write. Instead of writing this as 2 ln x, it's better to write it as 2 ln absolute value of x. Because what happens is when you move this back, you get ln absolute value of x squared, which is the same as x squared. But this absolute value takes care of negative values because if they, if they ever show up, then they'll turn into positives. Make sense? Hopefully it does make sense. So that's one way to approach it. Another approach that you can use here is, which we're going to see in a little bit why, is the following. x squared grows slower than 16 to the x. In other words, 16 to the x is actually an exponential function. x squared is polynomial, quadratic. Obviously, 16 to the power x is going to grow much faster. 
what is that supposed to mean? At, think about it. If at x equals 0, uh, this is 0, and the other one is 1. So this one is already larger. So think about it. At 0, one of them is 0, one of them is 1. But this is the one that is growing faster. So they'll never meet again because this guy is going to shoot up and this is just going to take its time. Make sense? I hope that makes sense. But we're going to look at it for now from another perspective too. So having used the absolute value would give us the following. Let me quickly tell you. We would do 2 ln absolute value of x equals x ln 16. And then we're going to get ln absolute value of x over x equals ln 16 over 2, which I showed to be equal to this number. Therefore, our x is going to be negative 1 half, and the absolute value will take care of the negative. Isn't that perfect? Ma that's why math is awesome. That's why I love math. Anyways, I hope you share this uh, sentiment. X equals to a negative 1 half works. Great. But is that the only solution? Okay, let's take a look at this. Y equals X squared and Y equals 16 to the X are both increasing. And they intersect at negative 1 half comma 1 fourth. We just verified it, right? Can they intersect again? Not on the positive side because we know 16 to the power X is just going to be shoot up and never intersect the poor parabola. Okay, so... Let's take a look at a couple of other things, and then I'll show you the two graphs. We could also check something like this on the negative side. We know positive side is not going to work. Let's go ahead and check the limit as x approaches negative infinity of ln absolute value of x over x. Notice that when x is approaching negative infinity, obviously the x values are going to be negative, so a, neg, absolute value of x is going to be negative x. I know this is going to look weird, but that's okay because ln negative x is defined, well defined, because x is negative, uh, negative x is positive. I hope that makes sense. And since uh, x is going to grow faster than the log function, uh, it's just a matter of rates, um, the denominator is going to approach infinity faster, so we're going to have like a number divided by infinity, which is zero. It's just a limit concept. What is that supposed to mean? As x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, our graph is actually going to approach the x-axis, which is kind of like acting like a horizontal asymptote. Make sense? Okay. Now take a look at this too. Um, f of 1 is 0. Now if x is positive, then ln absolute value of x over x is going to be ln x over x. Let's call this g of x. Let's differentiate g of x. We're going to get 1 minus ln x over x squared. Hopefully you can do this. And then set it equal to 0, we notice g prime of e is 0, and g of e is 1 over e. And that's approximately 0 0.37. That's actually a minimum point on the graph of g of x, which is this or that, whatever. So what is that supposed to mean? We were trying to set this equal to what? We were trying to set our function equal to ln 16 over 2, right? So our function was like this. Obviously, this value is much, much larger than the minimum. Therefore, they're not going to intersect on the positive x-axis. But let's quickly take a look at the graph, and hopefully this will make much more sense. First graph, the absolute value function ln absolute value of x divided by x. As you can see here, this is the maximum point. Did I say minimum? Okay, sorry about that. The maximum point for this function on the positive side, it cannot intersect this horizontal line, which is about y, y equals 1.38629, whatever. This is the minimum, I mean the maximum. What am I talking about? The maximum point. So they're not going to intersect there. But notice at negative 1 half, they will intersect perfectly. Let's take a look at the second graph, which is the graph of y equals x squared and 16 to the power x. As I tell, said earlier, uh, this is going to grow faster. This guy is going to be slower, and they will not intersect again. And on the negative side, one is decreasing, one is increasing, so they will intersect at a single point. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Again, I know it was indirect, but thank you for the idea. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.